So for our agenda today, we're going to go through um, a detail of Xperia test and introduce uh, them and talk about their capabilities. Then we will go over the combined solution of WorkSoft and Xperia test together, show you how to get started and be able to easily create your uh, mobile tests that cross your web, uh, custom apps, uh, and uh, mobile applications on various device types, be able to make edits and changes so those scripts will run across devices easily, and then be able to scale this to execute uh, in your environment. And then we'll have a Q&A session as we wrap up at the end. Let me start by introducing my colleague, Mark, who will go over the Xperia test details with you. Mark, take it away. Great, thanks, Eric. Uh, happy to be here uh, with our partner, WorkSoft, and uh, be able to talk to you, uh, the audience, uh, this morning. Um, really, the intent of this slide is just a brief introduction on uh, on Xperia Test. Uh, so there's a frame of reference of uh, of, uh, of what we deliver, and we'll, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of our capabilities later on. Uh, but I do think the the focus of today's session is to give you a real live demo of what it means to be able to create uh, mobile tests from a uh, works off perspective and uh, which is a very powerful capability. Um, Xperia test is uh, uh, comes to the table uh, delivering really a, a platform uh, that's uh, for dedicated for those who are wanting to get to a point of including uh, mobile app testing in uh, their formal test process and uh, derive really an, an automation an automated setup of uh, how those uh, test cases can execute and integrate them with the other uh, test processes they have for uh, testing anything from uh, the packaged applications that may have uh, mobile front end uh, on them to uh, to standalone native mobile apps for uh, for aspects of uh, of the business um, for which mobile applications are a critical part uh, or all of the above. Um, and uh, you'll hear about it uh, later when we talk about different deployment models. Our goal uh, primarily is to deliver a uh, a share, shareable, centralized, uh, managed uh, laboratory, if you will, device lab uh, of real devices that can be accessed from anywhere by, uh, by any uh, user, uh, can be delivered in uh, either a hosted cloud uh, environment to uh, accommodate ease of access uh, or uh, on an on-premise deployment uh, behind your firewall uh, with the ability to maintain it uh, locally and uh, and integrate it locally, um, the uh, the the goal is to support um, uh, any kind of uh, of testing need uh, from a mobile perspective, whether that be functional performance testing, uh, and as I said earlier, third party uh, application uh, testing, uh, where uh, mobile is a key element uh, of that capability. Um, we do provide uh, a whole host of uh, different different ways of creating test cases, uh, whether it be uh, choosing Appium as a as a standard native uh, framework for test uh, creation and execution, or through uh, our our partners uh, offering with Certify, which provides that uh, codeless uh, mechanism for uh, for automated test creation, and certainly the real power of of being able to um, have those mobile tests uh, be designed for executing against third-party packaged uh, applications. Um, it's a scalable uh, environment. Uh, so we have uh, customers that are executing tens of thousands of, uh, of mobile tests uh, on average a day um, to even smaller users who, uh, who have really very simple, small uh, configurations, maybe even starting off with, uh, with a uh, uh, a device tethered to their specific laptop. So their scalability options uh, on uh, on the high end and the low end for wherever uh, you are starting from your mobile uh, app and testing uh, requirement need. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. So the mobile solution between WorkSoft and Xperia Test allows us to take our flexible uh, interface capability where we're able to work with lots of different uh, applications and automate those, uh, whether those are mobile applications where we use the Xperia test interface, our mobile interface to be able to connect with uh, mobile solutions that Xperia test offers or more traditional testing that WorkSoft does in the areas of uh, SAP or packaged app testing and other tools like Salesforce or uh, Hybris, Workday, Ariba, 
concur success factors, whether that testing needs to occur on a desktop, on a web browser, needs to occur in a uh, SAP SAP GUI client, needs to occur in a Java or a Windows application, or actually needs to occur on a mobile device, we're able to cover all those different scenarios. So what that means is you have the ability to be able to use a single codeless, scriptless testing tool uh, and be able a uh, testing platform like WorkSoft and Expert Test together to be able to cover all of your unit integration and even end-to-end -end test scenarios that might be complex enough to include some web testing, some mobile testing, um, some rich client application testing across desktop and mobile devices, all from a single codeless uh, experience that makes it much easier and faster for you to be able to do that. And so we support that uh, as, as simply as plugging in one of your mobile devices that you have at your desk via your tethered charge cable and be able to automate right there uh, on your laptop at the smallest scale uh, to being able to have a, uh, a desktop or a server in your uh, data center or, or in your uh, environment that you're able to connect to that has a handful of devices that you're doing internal testing with, uh, enterprise application testing uh, or public cloud testing. And then of course, uh, Mark will talk later about Xperia Test SaaS offering, which allows you to even use hosted devices that they manage and, uh, and can have within your private cloud or in the public cloud that allow you to be able to do large scaling across many types of devices across the, the globe. So um, that's the, the benefit is uh, you can take that same test and quickly scale it from something you're trying out at your desk to something in, uh, in your uh, data center, your environment to the cloud without having to make uh, any major changes to the, the script itself. So in our environment, uh, here at WorkSoft, we actually have a, uh, it's just a, a, a desktop computer sitting in our uh, data closet, and we've got four devices plugged in, uh, iOS, phone, and tablet form factor, the iPad, as well as the Android phone and uh, Galaxy Tab tablet form factor. So that allows us to be able to cover those different uh, scenarios. So what we're able to do is uh, take that and be able to quickly um, swap out devices or work with them directly. Uh, but obviously, once you get to scale and you have teams across the globe, then it makes more sense to have shared managed devices that either your internal team manages or that you let Xperia Test manage on your behalf. So this will just be, for those of you that are existing WorkSoft customers, uh, kind of eye-opening as you see the same capability you're used to using to capture uh, mobile applications, to be able to work with those uh, applications, to capture document, and automate the same way you're used to doing uh, in your uh, larger environments with other applications. Uh, maybe you've got uh, SAP or you've got um, Hybris or success factors that you've been automating. Uh, and those are things that you're used to, used to using for works off automation purposes, packaged apps, custom apps, um, rich client applications. And now you can extend uh, that mobile testing even further so this will allow you to be able to more quickly um, go through and do that kind of capability. So um, I think you'll find that fairly interesting. So why don't we go uh, through and show you a couple uh, of the capabilities. We'll start with the ability to be able to just capture uh, a process and be able to uh, document that process so that you can have a quick way of taking something that's uh, mobile and be able to do that in a, a rich way uh, and also be able to do this in a, uh, a, a powerful way to be able to quickly capture your um, processes. So an example would be um, if you've got uh, a lot of different manual scripts laying around for your mobile testing and you want to be able to um, get those scripts quickly into uh, into a kind of a reasonable format that you can use over and over again, then you have the ability to do that quickly. You also have the ability to take what you're doing and work with that in a, um, a fashion that lets you um, also generate data from that. So if you've got a lot of different mobile testers that are running through their mobile tests and maybe they use different data for different divisions or different entities within the organization, it's important to be able to maybe capture that data variety and uniqueness across the environment. And so the benefit is that you're able to do that uh, very quickly uh, in the environment and be able to work with that as well. 
So there's a lot of different ways that uh, you'll find that um, you're able to support your various um, testing needs with that. So why don't we go through and show you some of the capability here with the um, ability to capture document and create automation. I'll hop over here and show you that capability. So I'll show you that uh, some of the configuration for this uh, is maintained in WorkSoft and show you kind of where that information is. And some of this information is going to be uh, configured in the larger environment. So as a, a WorkSoft user, you're able to use um, and configure the mobile capabilities here. So if you've got an on-premise solution, um, you can point at that on-premise solution. Uh, in our case, our SA Tether PC. If you actually are looking at the cloud and have cloud devices, you can point at that. So let me show you what I mean by this sort of device bank or these sets of devices that exist out there. So here I'm looking at the, uh, the local um, desktop that we have in the WorkSoft um, data closet where we've got just a handful of devices plugged in. We're able to view those and see what those look like. This is the, the Xperia test, C-Test cloud management console. It's just a web app that allows you to be able to look at the devices in a couple different um, views and be able to understand sort of what's running out there be able to actually open and interact with those devices and work with them in a friendly way. So um, this allows you to be able to understand sort of what's happening and kind of have a dashboard seeing how many are in use, how many are available, sort of how much usage you're seeing the devices get, uh, as well as manage the different applications that might uh, be running on those devices. So this allows you to be able to uh, configure user permissions as well as um, provisioning profiles for uh, iOS as well as even the applications themselves. So if you've got internally built applications that your organization has uh, built or maintained, those can be uploaded into the environment, the uh, IPA file, the iOS application package file, or the APK, the Android uh, package files, those can be uploaded. And then you can actually push those specific applications out to different devices in your device bank depending on the version they are, it'll push to the appropriate Apple or Android devices. Uh, you can uninstall those applications or delete them, re-instrument the devices. So you have a lot of control through this uh, console. So not only can I look at my local devices, but I can also look at cloud hosted devices. So here I've got the Expertest cloud and I'm able to see that I've got a different set of devices out here in my cloud. And it's simply a connection string uh, to point at these uh, different device type. So it makes it real nice for me when I'm going through the process of trying out a script locally, I can point at my local machine or my local devices. And then when I'm ready to go big scale, I can point at my cloud. So an example of that here would be I could go through, if I wanted to, I could point at my cloud, provide my credentials. And now I'm actually pointing at the cloud environment, I'm able to uh, pull up that environment at any point and learn objects on that screen using mobile learn, or I can simply connect to any one of the devices uh, very quickly in the environment. So this allows me to see those devices. And if I want to work with any of those devices, I can pull those up uh, in the environment. So let's say we want to look at uh, this iPhone 7 device, you can connect to that. It'll open it for automation, reserve it in the Experit Test platform, make sure I have permission to reserve that device at that time. If, if we've got different uh, shifts and schedules across the globe that are working with these devices, it'll be able to load balance that information. We can also um, take this information and be able to use this to um, work with different um, settings and different platforms. So whether we're doing desktop web testing or we're doing mobile Android or uh, other testing, we have the ability to go in and work with that information. So this allows us to be able to do uh, a lot of interesting things in the environment. We can also um, simply go through uh, and capture a business process. So let's say that we're wanting to go uh, go through some mobile script scenarios that kind of match maybe some some other 
scenarios that we've we've done before in the environment, but this time around, we're wanting to actually run through these um, in a, a mobile device in a Safari browser on an Android uh, on an iOS device or in a uh, a Chrome browser on the Android device. We're able uh, to do that uh, smoothly and easily. And what this means is that by uh, carrying out these kind of actions uh, in that way, we're able to um, very quickly move from other types of testing we may have been doing uh, on the desktop uh, to testing that we're going to be doing uh, in the uh, in the mobile uh, device space. Uh, so either one's supported, and this allows us to be able to work with a lot of different uh, device types. So here, kind of reviewing uh, some of the settings here in the environment, we're able to go in and uh, verify where our devices sit and what state they're in before we uh, carry out the capture and automation process itself. Review that the various applications that we need for the automation itself exist on the appropriate devices and the right versions exist out in that environment. Uh, if we need to push a later version and then simply uh, go out and connect to that environment. So in this case, I'll uh, connect to our local device bank of machines and to our iPhone. And so what you're getting is kind of a remote desktop view into that physical device. So that device is physically running out there and actually taking uh, keystrokes and you can even drag and drop um, and work with this. So this allows us to be able to interact with the uh, device and be able to capture uh, the process. We're also able to see the kind of applications that are running in the environment. And in this case, um, we're going to have Xperia Bank be the application that we're going to work through. So as we go through this process, we can capture uh, what's happening. So by being able to use uh, our capture capability, this allows us to go in and be able to work with the application. So here I can make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see for a, a small phone or a phone on a, on a large resolution screen. And uh, in this case, uh, we can set up a specific process that we want to be able to um, generate. So we can just say to WorkSoft, hey, I'm about to capture a new process. Capture will spin up and allow me to start carrying out this process. So whether it's a hybrid application, a native application uh, that's been built in-house or by a vendor, a third-party uh, solution provider, or it's a, a public application, we're able to carry out that uh, process. And what it's doing is capturing those details in the background. It's understanding the objects we're working with on the screen as well, and picking up specific details like the country that we're in and the environment that we're at. And this is just a banking application, so we're just going to walk through and send a payment. And we can do things like verify the information on the screen. Maybe we want to note that logo looks correct. So we can do image uh, matching on the logo. We can also verify that the specific information on the screen is correct. So maybe we want to make sure that that balance has changed. So we're able to go in and touch the specific um, object on the screen that matters and be able to capture that. We can then bring that into our environment. That process that's captured is now imported into the environment. We can see that the steps have friendly names for the process itself. And then we can even run the process and it'll actually go and carry out these uh, friendly named human readable narrative steps, which will actually automate. This is the same capability that we have for all of our other web and rich client application testing on the desktop. Now just controlling that mobile window and working with those objects in a friendly way. You can see that it's inputting that information and making those appropriate updates on the screen. It can swipe down or up to find the, the relevant item in a list and select that. 
any pop-ups or dialogues. So we're able to control the applications, even the, the operating system level tasks, like the setup commands or other things, we're able to work with any kind of objects within the mobile environment itself, and even be able to um, pick up things along the way. So we can verify information on the screen. We can even capture screenshots along the way to be able to show us what the document looks like. Uh, the other thing we're able to do uh, is take this through to be able to look at the uh, testing itself. So some of the capabilities might include um, being able to go through uh, and use this for uh, different purposes. So for example, let's say that we wanted to go through and work with this in a different environment or operating system. So we've disconnected from uh, the current environment and now we want to go through and understand um, how the script might work in another environment. So what we can do is go in to the environment itself and uh, disconnect from the specific system that we're looking at and we can connect to uh, a different environment. So now we're going to open up a connection to one of the other systems what this allows us to do is to be able to review that information. So here's an example of us going through and we're going to go through the process of actually um, opening up an Android device now for that same script that we captured for iOS and launch that Android version of that same application. So it could be a web application, like I said before, it could be an Android version that was built in um, Java versus Xcode or Swift for the iOS version. So the objects may have totally different names, but as we go through the process of, uh, of running this, what we'll find is of course, it's not finding those same objects that we use when we first captured the iOS script. So what we're able to do is actually go in and say, hey, you know what? I need to point out since we're now running the same script that we captured on an iOS device on an Android device and the objects have different names, how do we find those on the screen? So we can see we have an ability to recognize iOS objects by their placeholder with the placeholder of username, but I need to highlight, hey, we're now on an Android device running that iOS script. Here's what it looks like on an Android device. So we have this unique capability uh, that's unique in the marketplace that allows us to be able to let you um, quickly touch the object that is represented on an Android device. And we'll do the same thing for the password. And what this means is we're taking the same script that's actively running that normally executes on an iOS device just fine. We're now just taking that same script and making changes so that it shows um, and we can point out exactly where those same controls are. Again, no coding or scripting. We've now highlighted on an Android device. This is where those objects are. And then we can simply run through this process back up, in fact, to that prior step that failed now that it knows how to find it on an Android device as well as an iOS device, just hit run, and it'll simply start moving through and running that same script now that works both on iOS and Android. And even things like buttons uh, are recognized in the same way, so it moves right through those. And then, of course, we could go through and continue to uh, modify and, and update this to recognize the rest of the objects on the screen uh, as well. So it's very easy for us to go through and highlight those changes on the screen, be able to recognize those changes and be able to work with those. And of course, when our process execution finishes, we get a nice results view that'll give us timings on each of the steps uh, and reports and details about how that executed. Um, so this is very powerful and it makes it a lot easier to build scripts than having to hire uh, Java programmers or C Sharp or uh, JavaScript type programmers to be able to build these scripts out. If you've got maybe your core development team building unit level tests, they may continue to, to choose to build those unit level tests uh, in, in a coding language because um, programmers are okay with building tests in, in a programming language. But when you kind of move to that next level beyond sort of unit testing to integration testing or system string testing and then type of testing scenarios where you've got across multiple platforms, it's important to be able to handle the, uh, uh, the variety and variation without necessarily requiring a programmer at all the steps and stages, because what we find is that uh, it can be uh, tricky to maintain those over time. 
Uh, and what you'll find is over time, as you try and maintain those different um, scripts, that uh, it just becomes more and more uh, work to do so. And as you go through um, and trying to find the right skill sets that understand that, it becomes harder and harder uh, to be able to take advantage of that, uh, those changes in the environment and being able to work with those. Um, so that kind of represents the, uh, the first two parts of the demonstration. The other thing that um, we can show you is the ability to be able to work with um, scaling this. So to scale the environment, you have the ability to be able to run your tests at scale. So there's a couple different ways that scale is managed. One is that when your tests execute uh, in the Worksoft platform, those can be scaled across multiple uh, desktops or servers or virtual machines basically that can run in your uh, in your cloud or in your private cloud in one of your uh, vendors whether that's uh, an Amazon Web Services or a Microsoft Azure data center or a, a rack space wherever wherever you want to spin up VMs we have the ability to be able to scale that scriptless testing with Worksoft so that that uh, that scriptless test will execute across many virtual machines uh, and then the other way that we can scale is that we have the ability to be able to also take that same information um, for scaling our, our Worksoft test, uh, scriptless tests over to uh, Xperia tests and their Xperia test platform. Those uh, mobile devices, if you have many of those devices available in your environment or in their cloud, then they also can scale so that you can say, hey, I need to start one of these tests on a iOS phone form factor, or I need to start on an Android tablet form factor, and the Xperia test platform will automatically scale and pick one or more uh, of a, one of those available devices out of its bank of devices, either on your uh, in your premise uh, or in their cloud. And so that kind of scaling at both those levels means that you're able to run tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of tests every night with all kinds of data variety as well since uh, all of the scriptless testing also supports record sets so that you can drive that data uh, uniquely across environments and be able to point at uh, different devices. So I'll kind of show you some of the capability to do that here in, uh, in the platform. So we'll start with our ability to manage uh, executing across multiple devices. So we have a web platform that allows uh, Worksoft to do this, that you can connect to. And this allows you to be able to go in and see all the different uh, machines that need to be scaled across. So these are the machines that are gonna run the Worksoft uh, codeless or scriptless solutions. So these are typically Windows machines with some kind of a remote desktop, virtual desktop infrastructure in place. Uh, Citrix or uh, VMware, Zendesk or something like that, that allows you to be able to connect one or more machines and one or more logins because we do interactively take over the desktop. That's because that mobile testing environment, of course, pops up the interface. Um, and so we use that uh, interface and the interactive desktop to control that. And of course, some of your mobile tests may include hopping over to desktop web application or desktop rich client applications as part of an end-to-end -end test. So we uh, control the, uh, the desktop uh, as an interactive user. So these virtual machines or physical machines can sit anywhere in your organization. We've got one in London and one in New Mexico that we're able to uh, connect to. And then you set up uh, requests that simply represent running uh, one or more of these uh, tests. And so these represent one or more of those Worksoft uh, processes that have been defined across different machines uh, that you can execute. You're able to define when those are gonna run, who to contact, uh, when there's an issue, so you can add your own email address or a distribution list in your organization that needs to be contacted when the test starts and when it finishes, where the results uh, of the Worksoft test when it completes needs to go as far as a folder location, when do you want to start that uh, execution, and, and what processes, which mobile and or uh, uh, native desktop or web processes do you need to automate so you can set these up to run in any order in parallel or in a serial fashion from a sequence perspective. So you have a lot of different control over this. If you're, uh, if you're a 
interested in different types of recurrences. We can run these on a, on a daily basis, an hourly basis. Um, and you also have the options of being able to pick certain days of the week. Uh, in some cases, customers have continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment and delivery, uh, and continuous testing scenarios where they use uh, other orchestration and continuous integration tools like uh, Azure DevOps or Jenkins or Bamboo, uh, Concourse CI, many different sort of continuous integration tools that are out there. Uh, so we do support those as well. So if you don't want the scheduler to be based on uh, our capabilities, you do actually have the ability to use your own um, schedulers that you might have in place. Uh, a common one that folks use is Jenkins. So with Jenkins, you can even kick off the scheduled uh, test to execute across those devices uh, and across those test cases, uh, mobile and beyond. So you can always go into any one of these uh, tests that might be uh, scheduled as part of maybe checking in code to verify the quality of the code before it's uh, committed to the source repository or maybe a nightly build or in this case a daily build uh, that's kicked off from one of your CI CD tools and it's possible during those events uh, to be able to kick that off. So by running those uh, type of processes from here you'll see that those CI CD tools can kick that process off and when they kick that uh, off you'll actually see that those processes are running out there uh, and then you can even review what resources are being used at the moment. Here's a cross-platform, which will exercise some mobile, desktop, and other tests. Those tests are going to be running across a couple different resources. And then those resources, of course, are reaching out to the Xperia test uh, on-prem devices or cloud devices, and then kicking off those mobile devices as needed to carry out those tests. So you can even peek in. Uh, on the tests as they execute, you can see that uh, it's logging in and starting up those machines with a couple different user accounts. You can see some of that testing as it as it gets carried out. So you can kind of peek in on what it's up to, zoom in and see some of the details of the testing as it launches the mobile devices or web applications. Uh, there's abilities to be able to take over control. If it pauses or fails, you can remote desktop into those machines to see what they're up to. Um, you can also go through and um, swap out um, or tell it to abort if there's a failure and it pauses for more than 30 minutes or an hour or uh, 10 seconds, whatever you want that abort interval to be. It can basically clean up the test, um, clean up the environment and start the next test over. Um, so we're able to go through and, uh, and schedule and, and execute that. So this represents um, the ability to, uh, to scale on our side. And then of course, on the Xperia test side, they have the ability to scale across all those different um, applications and all those different mobile devices in their environment. So depending on which um, whichever uh, cloud environment or on-prem environment, you'll have many different devices that you can connect to and uh, our application will pick the, the next available one, allow you to connect to that uh, and scale the testing that way. Um, on the variety side, you're also able to go through and create a lot of different variety in the tests themselves and what kind of uh, data those tests represent. So an example that might be that um, in the environment itself, you've got uh, a shared test that's gonna run across a couple different devices. You're able to represent that as a record set with those devices. You can either get very specific and say, hey, I need these tests to run across these specific devices. It'll simply loop through um, the test that you've captured and log in and connect to those specific devices and even use appropriate credentials to drive that, uh, that test. So you can even define credentials um, and then you can even define specific data that needs to be passed in. So you can variableize all of your tests, not just the devices to connect to, but also the data to pass into the test for the amounts you wanna transfer, or the customers you wanna use, uh, the materials you wanna consume from your packaged and mobile apps. So this allows you to be able to build one script that will work across iOS and Android. And that one script across iOS and Android can be driven simply by swapping out these, um, these record sets for different kinds of test scenarios. So this again makes maintenance a lot faster since you can have one test script with all that data variety and all that device connectivity variety just defined in record sets. Uh, you can even go a step further and just say, hey, I wanna connect to the next available Apple device uh, that's of a uh, phone or a, 
a uh, tablet form factor and it'll go and find the relevant device, um, store that device, and then use that device um, ID later in the process. So this makes it a lot easier for you to go through and, and work with lots of different um, types of applications uh, and devices in the environment, and then carry out the appropriate tests and even have logic built in if for some reason that Android version of that device is a, uh, and the test script's a little bit different. You can say, hey, I want to go and verify what kind of device I'm currently on. If I'm on an Android device, then I actually need to maybe uh, change the path. In this case, I'm going to jump over to the Android steps. Otherwise, I'll come through and run the iOS steps. So this allows you in cases where you have different types of controls or slightly different sort of flows through those mobile applications to be able to define some simple logic and uh, conditioning and branching to be able to handle taking different paths for uh, the same script on two different devices. Obviously, if the uh, experience on the Android device for that mobile application is very different than on the iOS device, you might consider just having separate uh, processes captured for each. Uh, when they vary significantly, it's easier probably to maintain them that way. Uh, but if they're very similar and built by the same teams with very similar look and feel, then you can often get away with uh, shared script to be able to um, drive those tests. So those are some of the, the different things that will kind of help you with variety. Just to show you some of the other, uh, just uh, quickly, some of the other examples uh, of tests that you can go through. I wanted to highlight a couple other scenarios that are pretty common uh, as you're running through uh, tests and you can um, see some of the different ways that you can run through um, different sorts of scenarios for your uh, mobile testing needs. Here's some examples where we go in and do some testing of a native application. So we have the ability to go in and even download um, Salesforce on an iPad and even install and run it for the first time. So um, the kind of scenarios that we can support for end-to-end uh, -end testing can get pretty broad um, where we can even automate sort of the process of going through and getting the, the appropriate app off of an app store into the mobile device and then run the script and even potentially clean that up at the end. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of capability to, to do things that almost start to look um, like robotic process automation or RPA in nature because we are just driving the keyboard and mouse and desktop. So that allows us to be able to automate anything that happens on the screen. So that could even represent things like setup steps or cleanup steps for the data or for the applications or for the device as part of the test. And that's typically a best practice. Just make sure that the app exists, that it's installed. If not, go and install it and all that can be scripted. So here we're actually using our same friendly script to be able to go out and actually find that application in the app store when it uh, is available and finishes downloading, we then um, will pull that into the uh, into the device environment of the mobile device. And then from there, we're able to automate it. So this, again, is additional time saving steps you'll start to realize as you use the platform. Uh, and this helps you be able to uh, gain a lot of benefit. So here we can see we're now actually launching that installed Salesforce application on that iPad. We're actually going through the initial login process. And of course, the first time you log into Salesforce or other applications, there's typically sort of some checkbox options to kind of set it up for the first time. Those are things you can also automate as well. In this case, do you want to allow it access to certain features on the, on the device itself, allow it to send notifications. So anything that pops up on that device you're able to work with, uh, and again, without any code or script. So I've shown you sort of a hybrid um, native application. Here's a native application, but it's sort of a cloud application that's brought down. Again, we can learn the objects on the screen. If it is a native build application, mobile application, uh, and you've got the original IPA or APK file, then we're able to, to do some richer object analysis uh, and build automation that's more robust. Uh, but we have the ability to also work with these, these uh, App Store applications or Google Play Store applications as well. And as you can see here, you get a nice result view, tells you it took it 47 seconds to run through, or 47 steps to run through those 125 uh, seconds to run through those 47 mobile steps. 
we get a nice uh, report view of the results of the report that allow us to, to get step-by-step uh, -step confirmation, whether that's to uh, get sign off from the business or governance tracking uh, compliance type of documentation that you need uh, to prove the effectiveness of your application on different devices and form factors. Um, these are things that are helpful uh, that get generated by the, the platform. Um, the other thing we're able to do is uh, be able to give you documentation. When I showed you originally that uh, initial capture process, we have the ability to be able to um, take the, the captured document uh, or the captured process that we carried out at the beginning of the demo and have documentation um, ready for you. So this is in the case of you need to take those manual scripts or maybe they're just scripts that are in people's heads because they've been uh, doing this for a while and you're wanting to be able to uh, represent this as, uh, as actual scripts with screenshots. Um, we have the ability uh, to be able to do that for you as well because often it's important to have those for your test cases or your user stories. Uh, and so we make that uh, something that you can uh, that you can do easily as well, uh, just depending on what you're looking for. So um, whatever type of documentation or reporting needs that you have, we're able to um, be able to take care of those for you. Um, just to give you an example, I'll show you a couple of these reports. Here's an example of a generated document for that expert test process. And so as you capture that process initially, you get nice friendly narrative telling you what you did with screen level shots as you carry out those steps. So this is automatically generatable for you by the WorkSoft platform. So just as your users normally would probably have to sit there and take screenshots and you snag it in snippet and word to build these out, um, you're able to actually build these automatically. So these documents uh, can be auto generated from your capture. So there's a lot of things that help you scale not just the execution, but even just scale the process of doing mobile testing and end-to-end -end testing as a whole. So um, I hope that uh, that that's clear that that's our goal is to look at the entire end-to-end -end testing process and make all of the steps and all the sort of pieces in between stitch together more quickly. So I'm gonna hand this back over to Mark to walk through uh, some of the ways that they can scale out and scale up for you. Mark? Yeah, thanks, Eric. <clears throat> By the way, great. Uh, I think a fantastic demo. <clears throat> uh, it really shows the uh, the power of Certify for uh, the ability to create uh, mobile tests and uh, and certainly get to that point of automation, which uh, most people are now driving to as they uh, make mobile a critical piece of uh, of their digital transformation. Um, and I think it also emphasized, uh, hopefully for uh, for everyone in the audience, the transparency of the integration between Certify and uh, and the Experit Test Mobile Lab. Um, and uh, uh, these are just a few sides to, slides to reemphasize that from uh, from a lab perspective, you know, as you move to automation, the real critical piece is uh, to ensure that uh, you are now moving to a, a place where uh, devices are uh, shareable, controlled, you know, manageable resource and set of assets that can be used from anywhere uh, and by anyone in the organization that's involved in the test and validation. Uh, which means that uh, lab needs to be accessible, available, 24 by 7, uh, secure and protected and reliable, um, and uh, and that the and, and is uh, in uh, ad addressing um, the uh, distribution of uh, of uh, of your testers and your your development resources. So we offer a number of different. Uh, model models for deployment of a lab and i mentioned that earlier before uh with uh the ability to have that lab be in an on-premise uh uh lab uh shareable by your organization or in a private hosted cloud environment where uh expera test ourselves are uh setting up and maintaining that lab the infrastructure the devices the upgrade of those devices etc so it, it's offloading that uh, that maintenance uh, uh that would otherwise be uh required in an on-premise deployment and um, uh, which is highly valuable, I think, to, to many organizations to, today. Um, and, uh, and the ability then to scale that lab uh, whenever they need to 
adding more uh, devices, changing out those devices to meet the, the changes in, uh, in the world or the changes in the demand from the kinds of applications that, uh, that are being developed. Or in a hybrid deployment, and, uh, and we're global in nature. If you go to the next slide, Slayer, uh, Eric, the, uh, uh, one of the uh, values of our lab is the ability to actually set up a lab that is a multi-site, uh, yet feder uh, we would call a federated yet centralized approach to it, meaning that I can have my devices spread around the globe to make sure that they're clo as close to the testing uh, testers themselves and yet have them visible and accessible by the entire organization from wherever, uh, uh, from wherever those people are. Uh, we have data centers uh, throughout the, the globe that, uh, that allow us to, to do that um, and, uh, and at the same time to address the concerns for security. All those data centers are ISO and SOC 2 compliant. Um, so there really isn't much in our perspective a difference between uh, from, a, from a security and reliability and accessibility perspective, a cloud deployment or an on-prem deployment. Uh, but we do provide the option for that. And we also do have a public, as uh, uh, Eric mentioned, a public cloud offering primarily for people to jump on and, uh, and try out uh, the product. But certainly uh, there are a broad range of devices uh, that one has access uh, there. So uh, uh, broad coverage uh, is, uh, is there. So you really have three options, private hosted cloud, on-premise, or in a public cloud forum uh, of shareable devices accessible to you. Thanks, Mark. So as I showed, uh, it's easy for us to be able to create those uh, applications. And this uses the same uh, capability that we've had for the last uh, nearly 20 years that WorkSoft's been around to be able to, to quickly capture and learn those uh, applications, turn that into documentation and automation quickly that's scriptless and code free. So it's friendly for you to be able to edit and author those with uh, individuals on your team that don't necessarily have to be uh, coders uh, or scripters to be able to take part in the automation process. Um, you also have the ability to easily maintain those. So when there's issues, you can quickly retouch an object on the screen if it's just changed names uh, due to a development change uh, by the mobile dev team. Uh, you can quickly do that. You can even make that script uh, run across devices, be able to run across iOS and Android with the same script uh, uh, and be able to maintain that much more quickly and then using uh, record sets be able to drive all kinds of data variety and all kinds of device variety through that same script uh, very quickly so you can scale uh, how quickly you get up and uh, and cover that and I'll have Mark hit the last two there yeah um, I guess really just to to reiterate really the the focus of today's session is on the whole issue of uh, of the need to understand how to get to a point of automation of, uh, of mobile testing um, auto test automation is not new but certainly uh, the issue of, uh, of mobile apps and uh, mobile app development of, of expanding. We heard uh, in the survey at the beginning that we pretty much have a pretty broad range of, uh, of investment in mobile at this point from the uh, attendee uh, list, from those not really doing anything to those with five or six applications. So uh, our, our experience is this is catching on big. And uh, so you need to have the ability to create an automated uh, test environment that addresses mobile applications. And, and the challenge there, of course, is the breadth of different devices and OSs on the mobile side. Uh, so the best way to address that is to, to have a lab uh, that has real devices available for the entire organization to access, uh, to be able to perform both uh, manual testing, but more importantly, get to a point of uh, automation. Um, and have that automation be something uh, that's scalable uh, because guaranteed as, uh, as people move more and more to mobile, uh, they're going to have more and more uh, need to, uh, to have automation so that the changes to their applications can keep pace uh, or at least their testing can keep pace with the changes to their applications. Uh, and I think the only way to do that is to have uh, device lab and shareable access and, uh, and products like uh, Certify that allow the ability to quickly develop uh, automated test cases and then execute and run them in an automated fashion at scale. So we've reached our questions part. So I'll let uh, Lisa and team let us know what, uh, Alicia and team let us know what questions we have out there. 
Thanks, guys. And just a reminder to our audience, you can use your question panel to submit a question. Um, we'll take a couple that we have now. We only have a few minutes, so chances are we will not get to every question that we have, but uh, if you've asked a question, we will send it to you um, as part of the follow-up, and everyone will receive a copy of the recording as well. Um, first question, is the solution best suited for general purpose mobile app testing or more for mobile apps that integrate with packaged apps? So actually, that, uh, that's a great question. We're able to uh, do really kind of both scenarios. Typically, you'll find that with WorkSoft as a scriptless solution, it's really designed to work well across mobile and packaged application testing uh, because it allows you to work with interfaces beyond mobile, like uh, web desktop applications or um, rich client Java or .NET or uh, other types of applications, but still have that same friendly, common sort of uh, narrative uh, that you can read and, and work with. So typically we find uh, the best sort of customer sweet spot for us are customers that already have some packaged uh, or custom web application testing uh, or custom uh, rich client application testing already uh, of interest and need in their environment and are able to also extend this to, to mobile testing. And I can let Mark talk about sort of the pure mobile play with Experitest? Yeah, I, I mean, from our perspective as a, as a lab, we understand that uh, there are uh, a lot of different strategies for uh, for how you address test automation and, uh, and new ones coming out uh, all the time. Uh, I think uh, what we re receive a lot of requests on uh, on a daily basis is how they can, how organizations can take their existing uh, QA staff and enable them to be able to create automated test cases because of the goal of, uh, of having a robust suite of automated test cases. So um, this is where uh, we would call it a codeless environment like Certify comes into a play um, that helps uh, to address that. Um, I think certainly the, the power and the strength of, uh, of Certify is with its integration with third-party uh, apps like an SAP and a Salesforce. Um, so it's uh, its distinct advantage from a Colas perspective is to take advantage of those capabilities as well. Uh, but uh, our goal as a lab is to support a whole variety of different uh, ways that people have these days to uh, to automate uh, um, automate tests. Um, one more question while we have just a couple minutes left. Uh, do I have control over the devices in the lab? Yeah, that would be a question for me. Uh, I think you saw a bit of that uh, in, the, in the demo. Um, in a private hosted or, or an on-premise uh, environment, you have total control over uh, the devices in the lab. If the question is, um, well, let, let, let me say, uh, um, you, you as a customer, from our perspective, define what are the devices that you want to have in the lab, what manufacturer, what model, what uh, OS is, et cetera. Um, you, uh, if it's a private hosted lab, you can instruct us into the frequency with which you want those devices, up, uh, OS is upgraded. Um, you choose what applications you want to have loaded uh, on, those app, on those devices, um, what browsers, et cetera. Uh, so yes. Um, Full control and administrative control, and, and inclusive of uh, the ability to find who has access uh, to those devices. Um, so uh, an administrator would uh, would be the one internally to uh, to define that uh, capability for his organization. Thank you both very much. We are at time. Appreciate everyone's attendance, and please watch for the follow-up message with recording. Have a good day.